Hey guys, Frank Cox here. I'm the Barbecue Pit Engineer, and this is the Smoker Builder YouTube channel. Aaron had, uh, in the last video, got this collector box all fabbed up and everything, and now he's ready to put it on the tank. So uh, stay tuned. Alright guys, welcome back. So uh, as you, if you go back and watch uh, the video where Aaron put the collector box together, I mean it, he did a great job. This thing's massive, dude. It looks it's, great. It's a big unit on the end here. So. Yeah, and, and I think this is, this is kind of the fun part in my opinion, uh, but it can be a real head scratcher because you've got nothing flat and then you're trying to move something against that. That's actually got to be centered up and square and all of that stuff. So this is going to be a little bit of a challenge, I think. It is. It's a it's a slow game. This isn't something you just jump in and start hacking stuff back. I mean, you got to think about what's happening. Uh, make sure you're not cutting away material you really need, and uh, just do a little at a time. When I initially started making these ends with Frank, um, I was really adamant about keeping all my surfaces really flat. And I did so, and I, I had welded in a stiffener, something like a piece of flat stock that went across, and I clamped it down and it forced that sheet to be flat. I tack welded it in place, and then I began assembling my dimensional piece. Uh, what happened with that is it did remain straight, but as I put heat on there with the exhaust, and I put heat welding onto the belt, it warped a little bit and it went down and no longer was it straight it was now concaved and when that happens it'll start collecting water when this is all said and done between the belt and the stack and we don't really want that you don't want to collect water here and have a pool you want that to run off so in hindsight when the second one came around and we're still dealing with the first uh, sheet the second sheet there was a, a natural bow in there so rather than trying to chase that bow out and getting it flat again and doing the same thing I had just done, I decided to just run with it. It doesn't really matter. This is, as long as it looks aesthetically like it should and the mass is there to accommodate the, the thousand gallon flow, then it can kind of be whatever it needs to be. With that said, I left the bow within the sheet. So I didn't chase it too much. What I did is I put the bow so it's bowing outbound and on the other side it's bowing outbound too. So it has a little bit of a swell to it. And uh, I just left it alone. I tacked it in place. I left that swell in there. And then I tack welded a stiffener on the inside to keep it tall. And that will remain the same height during all of this processing that we're doing right now. Yeah, and then we won't take that stiffener out until this thing is tacked in place, welded in place, whatever. We've got doors out on the cook chamber. Then we actually get inside and start messing with all of that. Yeah, we'll be able to access it from the inside and cut it out and remove it after it's welded. Kind of like a car roof, this thing is going to shed water. It's not going to sit yeah. there in a pool. We're not going to have rust, pockets, and stuff like that. Now, a little bit about the engineering side of a collector box, because I know everybody's going to ask in the comments. And if you want to really know like an in-depth uh, study of that, make sure to go over to Smoker Builder U. We do a live uh, every week. We do a live on Wednesday night. Uh, Zoom call that is barbecue pit engineering with Frank and I go over all of the mechanical stuff with this both from a fabrication perspective material usage perspective but then also what's going to help my smoker run the best and I'll be honest with you you could put an elbow on here you could put a collector box on here there will be some small differences but at, at the end of the day it's not going to matter as much as what material you have to work with and uh, you know what's laying around that kind of stuff you know, what you're comfortable fabricating with. But the biggest thing is dimensionally, what I wanted to hit on there, is I get a lot of questions about how far out this collector box should stick. And honestly, the only answer is, what's the diameter of your smokestack? Do you want a flange on that smokestack? And how much room do you need around it to do any welding? If you weld your stack directly to this, you need to be able to get your gun back behind there. Um, you're either going to weld this joint up against the tank first or you're going to weld your smokestack. So that's really the only thing that matters to me. Yeah. Other than that, the height of this needs to be the same height or more than your smokestack so you don't have restriction in that spot. So not going to lie, we kind of did some uh, prep work on this before we got started. Sure. So sure. kind of run us through a little bit of that process. All right, so what we did to get started right to this moment is we got some adjustable jack stands on here. 
And that's going to allow us to put this manifold sitting on there and then we can manipulate all the angles in which it's sitting at. We can kind of square it up. Um, another thing we did is we measured the center of our belt and that's going to be our cooking grade height at 36 and we measured off the ground. We double checked around the corner and then we measured how thick our collector was, went to our halfway mark and then marked where the top and the bottom part of our collector are going to live on this belt and that'll help us locate this level and square where it needs to be. We put a straight edge on here, made sure that angle is going to end up where we think it's going to end up. Same thing on the bottom and when everything looks pretty close then we start slowly trimming this into place. So this is the most critical part of this intersection here. This we're going to be trimming back to fit the belt so we're not really crazy worried about this. We're more worried about getting this in the right intersection so it mirrors the other side hey, as hey, close did you, as possible. Did you feel that just now? What's that? That, feel, that guy in the comments that said, why don't you just cut a hole in the head and just stick it in there? Yeah. <laughs> That's another way you can do it. Uh, personally, I don't like that. For some reason, I've just never liked that approach. Um, honestly, I, I believe that if, if it's easier for me to match this to the head than it is for me to stab that hole on the side of there cut that fish mouth out and then get this piece in there. It's, it's, it, everybody likes their hot dog a different way. Like that yeah. one guy said in the post that day. <laughs> yeah. So you can do whatever you want, but this is the way that works for us. So yep. show us a little bit of cardboard assisted drafting here, what you did. Okay. So where do we begin? Well, we know that we want this edge smacked up against this belt. So that's how far inbound this whole thing needs to come closer to the tank. So we'll grab a tape and to see where you're at. And it's eight inches. We need to come in eight inches. So this whole thing needs to come inbound and this cut that needs to happen is gonna be at a, at a radius just like this bell. So first things first, I need to know what shape I'm gonna be cutting into this in order to know where to place it. Cause it's not a straight line, it's gonna be a curve. So what I'll do is, I'll take this same plane here and I'm going to extend something to put a mark on the tank. And if I keep doing that, just like we did on our firebox side, it's going to reveal a dot pattern and that pattern is what angle it needs to be. So you get a straight edge, you put it on your working material, you can scoot it all the way to the tank, you can take your marker and put a little dot on there, and you just keep going. Maybe you look, just scoot it back, put a dot. Put it on there, scoot it back, put a dot. <laughs> Nothing to it, don't even think about it. Okay, over time, this is gonna generate your pattern in which we're gonna have to cut. You just connect all the dots, and this will put a big pattern on there. We have these smoker builder pads, I think these are on our site. Happens to be half the distance of our material here. The perfect deal to just do half a pattern, Flip it around and mirror it and do the other half. Here we are. There it is. <laughs> and through the magic of time, that's what the barbecue pit boys Oh, there you say. go. <laughs> All right, so here's our pattern. And you're going to want to line this up on the top. And then just kind of use it as a slide back and forth. So we put this on the top, and then we're going to slide it forward. And that's kind of where it's hitting our hitting our steel at. Is it perfect? No. Is it close? Very close. So we're going to begin with this cut and then slowly kind of fit it as we bring this inbound. So this is the pattern we're going to be cutting out of this. So the question is now, where do we put this pattern? It has all this space to live on here. Well, we have eight inches to deal with. We're trying to get rid of this eight inch gap. So this lives on here. We're going to scoot it all the way forward, and that is our first dot, our first position in our eight inches, and then we needed to go here, back eight inches, and make a mark. And that is right, almost right at our top plate and our side plate intersection. It just passed it. So rather than going right to the, the perfect scenario, I'm going to come inbound three quarters to one inch, and then I'm going to make my cope. I'm already anticipating it not going to fit, but it's going to get me so much closer 
that I can go and make a secondary trimming cut and, and it'll be even closer on the third time. They always say third time the charm, there's a reason for that. I always run into that in the shop. I'll screw up the first one, I'll almost get it perfect on the second one, and the third one is money. It just, there it is. And it's worth doing those two other steps to get the perfect part or the perfect coat that you need. So take your time, expect to screw up a couple times because it, it just happens. Unless you're perfect, but that's not me. <laughs> I need the third time. Right. All right, so we got our mark back. We're gonna transfer our coat. So we know we need to go inbound eight inches. So that's gonna bring us all the way back to here. Now we can still barely see our, our edge here. And once that's on there, we'll be able to trace this coat back. Like I said, we're gonna move this forward three quarters of an inch just, just for good measure. And then we'll put the coat on there. And that'll be our first cut. And we'll be right back to see how close we got with that cut. Okay, so which cut are you using right now? This is a... Uh, that's dark. Big long number. 500P AG60P. Yeah. This is a $250 Amazon plasma cutter. 50 amp. And it's working pretty good. I, I'd love to talk some smack out of it. There's nothing to say. It's just working. Good enough. Good enough, man. Can't beat it for the money. This is a done. Looking at the fit up here, uh, you can tell it's about the same gap all the way around. What do you think? Yeah, it looks pretty good. What you're going to have to do is just kind of, you're still, once you're fitting this up, you're going to have to go ahead and make sure that you're on plane still with where you intended to be. Just eyeballing it, it looks like I might have scooted it too far Don't this way. To rotate around the block. a little yeah. bit. Um, but, I mean, honestly, I mean, the fit from where I'm standing looks pretty darn good. I think you could go ahead and bring this out where, yeah. we, where we originally thought it should be and yeah. move on in. We're at about an inch is, is uh, the same distance that we we gave extra to our last coat just in mm -hmm. case. Yeah, and if for some reason, like none of this stuff is shaped the same, like Aaron was saying earlier, if for some reason you get up in there and you feel like you need to go ahead and trim a little bit, we just want to minimize how much trimming has to be done. Yeah. And you can easily do that by just using your marker and tracing along the profile, making a mark, then you can adjust accordingly. Straight edge and transfer that line on to yeah. where you're going to be. Yep, so I think, uh, what do you think? You want to go ahead and uh, trim that off? back? Yeah. Yeah. So what we did there is we marked all the way around where this collector box is going to touch the tank. So we can go ahead and start cutting and grinding and stuff on the cooker uh, body. We're going to move this over off of here onto the table. And once it's on that table, we're going to be able to uh, uh, trim back on the edges, you know, stuff like that. All right, so we just made our second coping cut, but it's a very straight 90 degree cut and we're trying to put a quarter inch 90 degree piece of plate edge against a round piece. So it's not gonna totally line up. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of the inside of this off and give myself more of an angled edge to kind of match the radius of our belt. And while he's doing that, I'm going to take everywhere we traced and I'm going to take a hammer and a center punch and I'm going to make the marks so that after we, uh, after we grind all this paint off for our fit up, then I know where the line was to begin with. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and finish marking out these lines with the center punch so we can align this collector box super easy when we come back. And Aaron is going to clean this thing up. So that's it for today's video, but hey, while I got you real quick, I wanted to let you know we did publish the plans for this build this weekend. It's over on smokerplans.net. There's a link in the description to take you right over there. Super excited about it and huge shout out to CAD Guy because he knocked it out of the park on this one. So also, I wanted to let you know if you need any help with your build whatsoever, go over to smokerbuilderu, that's smokerbuilder, the letter U, dot com, and we'll, we're over there to help you. So you can participate with our, our uh, community, you can check out all the online courses we've got. We've got a live weekly class you're invited to join us for free. 
Uh, it's on Zoom, and uh, we do it live in front of everybody and record it so that we can publish it in the replays. And uh, anyway, we've got all kinds of other resources there as well that'll help you with your build. Till next time, keep your smoke thin and blue, and I can't wait to see you on the next video that's coming out in just a few days. See you later.